I now want to take a closer look at spherical geometry, also known as elliptical geometry. And for the purposes of this video, I'm going to assume that I'm talking about the unit sphere, which tells me that alpha is going to be pi. My maximum possible distance in this case will be pi. The first thing I want to show is the angle sum of any triangle on the sphere is greater than 180. In the last video, I showed that all right triangles have an angle sum greater than 180. I now want to go into all triangles. First, if our triangle has two or more obtuse angles, then we're done, since obtuse angles are already bigger than 90, and having two of them would already add me up to be greater than 180, plus another third angle. So we won't consider this case. Instead, we're going to only consider triangles with one or zero obtuse angles. I'm going to let side AB be the longest. So just label your vertices so that side AB is the longest side. In this case, we'll make it this bottom side here. So this will be A, B, and here's C. We then want to construct a segment CD such that it's perpendicular to AB. So I want to draw the perpendicular line from C to AB. And then that intersection point will be D. I'm then going to go ahead and label these angles. I have 1, 2, 3, and 4. I know that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 needs to be greater than 90 degrees since this is a right triangle. I already know right triangles sum to be greater than 180, and I know that this angle here is already 90. So the measure of angle one plus angle two needs to be greater than 90. Equivalently, the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four needs to be greater than 90. Once again, this triangle here on the right is a right triangle, and I've already shown that right triangles sum to be bigger than 180. Adding these up, I would have the measure of angle one plus two plus three plus 4 to be greater than 180. The measure of angle 1 is the same as angle A. 2 plus 3 is the same as the measure of angle C. And 4 is the same as the measure of angle B. So I have that if I add up the three angles of my original triangle, I get something bigger than 180. Related to this is the idea of excess denoted by an epsilon of a given triangle. I'm going to let S be the angle sum of my triangle. Then the excess of that triangle is defined to be S minus 180. It's essentially how far away from 180 our triangle actually is. And I can extend this idea. If I want to find the excess of an n-sided polygon, we take the angle sum of the polygon that we have minus what it should be in Euclidean space, which is n minus 2 times 180. So let's look at some examples of this. My first example, each angle of a regular decagon has measure of 150. What is its excess? Well, decagon means we have 10 sides. So that tells me my actual angle sum. Each one of my 10 angles measures 150. So I can get my angle sum to be 150 times 10 or 1500. Normally my angle sum formula is n minus two times 180. In this case, n is 10. So this will be eight times 180, which is 1440. So the excess of my decagon, 1500 minus 1440, which gives me an excess of 60. This is my next example. Here I have a regular hexagon attached to a regular quadrilateral and two isosceles triangles. And I want to find the excess of each. Let's start with the hexagon. The actual angle sum, well, we know each angle is 125, and there are six angles, which gives me 750. 
On the other hand, n minus 2 times 180. A hexagon has six sides, so this would be 4 times 180, which gives me 720. So the excess of my hexagon is 750 minus 720, or 30. Next, let's look at the quadrilateral. The quadrilateral has angles of 95, and there are four of them. That gives me that the angle sum is 380. On the other hand, if we do n minus 2 times 180, in this case n is 4, so we would have 2 times 180, or 360. So the excess of my quadrilateral is going to be 380 minus 360, which is 20. Now let's consider the triangle. Each one of these triangles is the same, so we only need to consider one of them. We know it's isosceles. So I have two angles of 25 degrees. And then we have to figure out this third angle here. Well, we know this circle here has to be 360. So 360 minus the 125 from this piece and the 95 from this piece will give me the third angle. This gives me an angle sum of 190. So the excess of my triangles are 190 minus 180, which is 10. I went ahead and wrote the excesses that we just calculated here. And this time I want to find the excess of the big outside shape. Well, let's look at the angle sum. This angle here would be 125, and this one is 125. So I have two angles that are measure 125. This angle here in the bottom one, these are 125 plus 25, so 150, and I have two of those. And then my angles here on the right. The angle from the quadrilateral is 95 and from the triangle is 25, so these are 120 each, and there are two of those. And when we add these all up, we get 790. On the other hand, n minus 2 times 180, this big outside shape is a hexagon, so we would have 4 times 180, which is 720. So the excess of the outer hexagon is 790 minus 720, or 70. And we can also see that if we would have added each one of these excesses, 30 plus 20 would be 50, plus 10 is 60, plus 10 is 70. So this is a demonstration of my next theorem. This theorem says that if we have a triangle ABC, so I'm going to go ahead and draw this as we go through the statement of this theorem. So here's my triangle ABC. D is going to be any point taken on the interior of side BC. And then I want to consider the segment AD. I'm essentially going to break my triangle up into two smaller triangles. Excess 1 is the excess of triangle ABD, the excess of this one over here. Excess 2 is the triangle of ADC, the excess here. And I'm going to go ahead and label these angles. 1, 2, 3, and then 4, 5, 6. And what I'm claiming is that the excess of the big triangle comes from just adding the excess of triangles 1 and 2. Well, excess 1 is going to be defined as the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 minus 180. Excess 2 is the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 5 plus the measure of angle 6 minus 180. 
So if I try to add these, I'm going to do this at the bottom so I have space. This would be the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 plus angle 4 plus angle 5 plus angle 6 and then minus 360 since I have 2 minus 180s. And if we scroll down just a little bit, angle 1 is the measure of angle B. Angle 3 plus angle 4 is the measure of angle A. Angle 6 is the measure of angle C. And then 2 plus 5 is 180. Since those are supplementary, they lie on a line. And then minus 360. Rewriting this, we have the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C minus 180, which is exactly the excess of triangle ABC. This essentially shows me excess is additive, and there's nothing unique about only two triangles here. Essentially, excess for any polygons will be additive like this.